A chorus of the Kakaidos separated us from them, giving me a sense of distance. At first I thought my own voice was too soft for even me to hear, but for a really long time Coach didn't respond to my words. So at this point I began to wonder if I had said something I shouldn't have. Just when I began to feel impatient, Coach finally spoke. Something unfortunate happened. A few things, actually. After informing me that what he was about to say was a secret, Coach began to talk a little at a time. It's been three years already. Right around this time of year, I think. So no good chance his parents were in an accident. An accident? Yes, at a public park they missed their mile of vacation bay and fell from the viewing platform. It was supposed to just be a little time away from the house for the family. They went for a walk on a path through a nature park after it had rained. There was a little viewing platform that looked like it had a good view. That was the stage on which the tragedy was set. The metal fixtures in the viewing platform fence had deteriorated from time. And with all the rain they had just gotten, they might have loosened somewhat. Right before Stoker's eyes, both the fence and her parents fell. There was a river some tens of meters below. The water level was high due to the rain, and apparently very muddy. And, and her parents, Coach gave a thin but melancholic smile and touched his paper cup to his lips. Without saying anything, I knew how unfortunate the accident was and how Stoker's parents had left them on an eternal vacation. Eternal. Uh, but Stoker is. Wow. I was so focused on being careful with my words that I lost what I was going to say. A single word, orphans. I knew how little consideration it showed and how much it would hurt Stoker without having to say it aloud. Come to think of it, Stoker lived with Rigachan. At least, that's what I thought I heard from Mullins. Wait, Rick Chan, her father died from illness too, and her mother soon after. I felt like I heard she was living by herself. Yes, she's living with Ferruti san right now. They've probably lived many discouraging days without any parents, but they've gotten along by helping each other. Going on living without the protection of parents is very difficult for kids that age, I think. No, that's him speaking. Going on living without the protection of parents. Very difficult for kids that age, I think. By Morissa, you can probably understand that as well. I've only survived because I rely on my parents, so the only reply I can give was to nod. Freddy's son is particularly loved by the older people in the village. As long as she's here, she won't wait for uh, one for much. Come to think of it, you're right. Rick Chan kind of seems like the village mascot sometimes. I don't think she'd have a hard time living here. Rick Chan could go meep just once and get two or three bouquets from the vendor, after all. I felt like if she asked for help, everyone in the village would. But that only applies to Rikachan in particular. Sloka Chan doesn't have it in the same way. Rikachan being so spoiled was just an exception. If one think about it normally, living on your own as a child should be fraught with difficulty. It wasn't then very difficult to imagine how much suffering Stoker had to go through just to live. It was very difficult to imagine. Was I really thinking that? No, I was only thinking the words. I couldn't imagine it in the slightest. How was I supposed to imagine it when I saw that annoying smile of hers? There was no way I could. I found out she was living apart from her brother, and I just kind of vaguely thought that it was rather unfortunate. I mean, Sudoku was smiling so energetically every single day. Was I thinking that her smiling meant she wasn't there? That she didn't really feel lonely? When she found out my parents were coming home the other night, Sudoku said, The family sit around the dinner table is the most fun way to enjoy a meal, a, a meal after all. Those words held a lot more weight now. I'd seriously consider adopting her. Huh? Option. It's a secret. After warning me, Coach put his index finger to his lips. I've lived a really steady life all these years. I own property and I have credit. When 
marriage is the one thing I never got around to. By law, obviously, a single angel can't adopt a child. So I can't mix it up with my adopted daughter. <laughs> what a shame. It didn't take long for my plan to get her to call me Papa to hit a setback. Is that actually a thing? Where it's like, no, only like, adoption only works for like, couples, I suppose. I don't know. I don't really know much about adoption, to be honest. And if it's not the case anymore, then, you know, this is set in the 80s, so you gotta take that into account as well. This guy sprouts some crazy stuff. At first, I was only half listening. But midway through, I realized how rude that was. This coach person seriously only wished for this one girl, so don't gotta be happy. That was not like crazy, nor was it nonsense. He just wanted her to be happy. Those were his true feelings. Chan's current lifestyle is probably not very happy, but, you know, I want to make it easier for her, even if it's only a little. <laughs> of course I can't do much for her, but share my leftover food. The new errands that she's not strong enough to do it. You're wrong. She so looks happy. Ah, just showed surprise at my having declared that. There's so many people around her that really want to make her want her to be happy. She can't possibly feel otherwise. I spoke with a serious expression quietly, but firmly all the same. It was my approval of his feelings and my grat <coughs> gratitude as Sudoku's needy. Thank you. Still, keep this a secret from Sudoku chan, okay? If she knew I went to adopt her. She'd probably get mad and call me a pervert for wanting me to call her a pa uh, me to call her papa. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> Is that incorrect there? Perfect for wanting me to call her Papa. Shouldn't it be something like for wanting her to call me Baba? Those those are in the wrong places, aren't they? I wonder. Sloka may have been somewhat childish, but she was still able to emphasize the people. She'd call him that. As if my feelings had gotten across, Coach grinned, satisfied, and returned his gaze to the hustle and bustle of the forest. My parents and her older brother. She lost her family and had no relatives, and was huddled up with Rick Chan and was in the same situation. You know, it's like... It makes it seem like it's the first time we're hearing about all this, but it isn't technically, is it? In Onikakushi, we learn a bit about it, and the same thing, I think, happened in Watanagashi. But, uh, Keiichi didn't really pick up on it properly back in those ones. Sadoku so Hojo. It wouldn't be odd for her to look at her life of despair, but she didn't seem to feel that way. She lived energetically with a smile. I want her to keep smiling forever. It was a naive wish, and yet it was one that he couldn't help but ignore. So the words that I spoke were the same. What a coincidence. I think the same way. Oh, you too, my Baraku. Then that makes us friends. Let's make a promise. A promise? It's very simple. Goat said this, give me a grin. That's not a grin. That we will never ever make her cry. It was short and to the point. Uh, yeah. From Sue. Coach nodded happily. We exchanged no more words after that. We just sat there comfortably gazing at Stoko and everyone else having a good time. She had certainly lost family, but there were people watching over her. How reassuring must that have been? Just hypothetically, if you did adopt Stoko, what would you do? Hmm, that's a tough one. Coach gave a wry, happy smile, then exaggerately tilted his head in contemplation. Well, first I would get her to call me Master and re-educate her in the ways of a maidservant. Huh? What? <laughs> Have you learned nothing in this whole situation, Keiichi? He says outrageous things, remember? 
How does this guy always pick the craziest time to say the craziest things? Um, my Varakun. I, well, I haven't said anything yet. What are you talking about? I heard it loud and clear. Oh, it's Shion. She's... She hasn't even appeared in this one yet, but here she is, just casually pops up. Oh, that's right. I clearly said I would put Stook on a wooden bondage horse and made her my meat slave. Ah, oh, that sounds nice. Stook the on, on a wooden horse. What the fuck? Please leave the item using play for her after she's acquired the proper knowledge. It would be very dangerous to go in with a wrong idea. I get it. They do always write on labels so to use... Wait, no, no, that's probably him. I get it. They do always write on labels so to use things for their intended purpose, after all. That's right. K-Chan, you do understand. Oh, it was K-Chan. And with that, it's time for... My hand shot out and grabbed Shion, smiling, waving, and about to leave by the nape of her neck. I don't think she has appeared in this one yet, but that gives indication he knows who Shion is. So they must have, you know, met at least once at some point off-screen in this one. It really is. It's like if you don't, like, go for the Kakushin with Tangashi, you'd be clueless, because they just throw you in, these characters in, and you're just like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Hey, wait right there. Don't just show up out of nowhere and start saying crazy stuff. How do you make your David appearance in... Well, it's not... A, she's already made her David appearance in Watanagashi, but... Making her first appearance in this arc by freaking sparking crazy shit. Speaking of saying crazy stuff, I thought the Sudoku uh, talk you were having with the coach was pretty crazy, too. I can perform a reenactment of the adaption bit. Wanna see? I don't care. <laughs> You've been hiding ever since then? Kei-chan, you can't even beat my sister. You're a hundred years too early to challenge me. <laughs> this was Shion Sonozaki, the younger of the Sonozaki twins. Though she hadn't uh, scrambled the reserved quality you'd expect from a little sister. Kinda weird, really, isn't it? Remember what Tanagashi when she first appeared? Her whole existence was my... Uh, how to describe it? Kind of, I don't know. It's like Keiichi thought for the longest time that she was Mion, and the only other person that knew about her was Rena and Rika. I'm not sure if Satoko knew about her at that point or not, but Rika knew about her, and Rena only knew that she existed but had never met her. But now here she is, just casually, just like interacting with the rest of the characters. She had uh, a scrap of the reserve quality and a special position. She was a villain no better than her older sister Mion. We met the old name in town and I dug myself into the hole and I mistook her from the old. Same scenario now, except unlike last time, it seems that, you know, the misunderstanding has been cleared up a lot quicker. And like Mion, she only said she was living in Okinia. So I thought we never see each other again. But I think we actually would. My friend who displeased the question didn't change a bit on. This must be what people mean when they say something is like the water off a duck's back. See on time, you okay. I was disappointed because I thought you wouldn't make it. Well, I shouldn't think of anything else. Uh, shouldn't really think of anything else to do, really. I figured I'd come and tease you all a little. Coach, why did you need to call Sion to our victory celebration? How did she contribute to our team's win? <laughs> well, you see, I'm actually the manager for the enemy style fighters. The manager? Oh, wait, then. Why weren't you at the game yesterday? That's because I'm like a ghost manager. <laughs> you seem to think I'd forgive her if she stuck her tongue out and smiled. I remember it now. We will actually like get some, you know, thriller inside and backstory for, you know, the whole why the hell is she the manager? How does that happen? But I don't think we'll actually see much of that in this arc. We'll see it in one of the answer arc. But I won't spoil which answer arc will reveal that. But it gives us a lot more insight and backstory and all kinds of shit for Chiang. 
To negotiate. Coach, why did you call Xion here too? She's a coach member. She's been slacking off for the last year and my phone's ringing. It's a number I don't recognize, so I'm not even gonna bother her. That's usually the case. <laughs> I just thought it would be even more fun if Xion John was here. Yep. Ah, uh, it definitely works. That was what he planned for all along. Mission accomplished. Hey, hey, chan come over here. We're all playing a game. There's strings attached, of course. Let's <laughs> face this fight. I'm not amused. Kei-chan, how about you? The rules are simple and it'll be fun. Hmm, should I? That looks perfect. I'll just win if I join in, after all. I don't want to ruin my sister's presidential image. Mayon, now irritated, turned around with a glare. Hmm. Why is it my sister? Should I join in to make this a battle of the siblings? For your sake, I don't think we should. What if you want to? Bleh. I won't let you play, Xion. We're leaving you out. Bleh. Well, Mion just avoided a direct confrontation. It seemed like the twins were completely incompatible with each other. She won't let her play. I'm looking forward to seeing you can face off. I hate Xion. I'm bad against her. An angry man dragged me away. Do your best. I'll be rooting for you. Go for it, Kei Chan. Yay! Yay! That's 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 only for Rika. Only Rika gets to say yay. Well, not really. But she says it more often than any other character, doesn't she? Xion waves her hand at us, uh, dribbling in the blitz of teasing me on. I guess it must be similar to how Keiichi likes to tease Rena and Rika there, isn't it? It's a standard protagonist thing in these type of novels, you know. They've got to tease some of the other characters. Only if they're female. On rare occasions, they might tease another male character, but usually female. Alright, club activities have begun, which meant I needed to clear my mind. What was today's battle? Today's punishment game! What a perfect time for a cliffhanger, but no. I'm going to continue recording, because otherwise it'd just be like... I don't know how that would work out. 
It'd be like one part and part of a second part, so it wouldn't make sense. It's like 54 minutes into this now. I take on anything! Take anything on it. Okay, kids, Dad. You should prepare yourself. We're going all out today. Great, bring it on. Don't go on, I'll crush you all mercilessly. Ha 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 ha. Rena will me up. I will let fish her stuff up a wing. She's gonna be killed to the son of a bitch. I remember this vaguely. I think in the anime adaption, I think, or maybe I'm remembering wrong. I think I remember seeing them like, you know, the imagination kind of spots they got going on here. I think like each character got their own, and I think I remember in the anime seeing Rika riding on a bunch of manta rays. Could be wrong though. But I do remember something absurd like that in the anime adaption. Oh, act like a manta ray. I want to take you home. Act like a manta ray? Do you mean, well, a test? I don't know. Okay, everyone. We have a lot of people today, so let's play something easy and simple. Today's game is... Off screen. Ah, oh, I hate when they cry. <laughs> the way this, this screen, this background is like, what, are we going straight in the tips menu? <laughs> because that's the background for it, isn't it? Everyone who lost the game, uh, everyone who lost the game, game dropped out and had to help clean up after the barbecue. Only one game needed. <laughs> she all laughed more uproariously than anyone I'd ever heard when she saw my loser base. Okay, okay, was my getting bombed out of the game really that funny? Man, oh man, K-chan's face it was like, how can you still call yourself human? Call yourselves human? <laughs> Damn it! I had it all worked out when I bought up the scissors. If only, if only Satoko and chan had betrayed me! I was going, it was going great while they had maintained a united front. But Satoko had been quicker to betray me than I heard. She was just a tiny bit better than me. Ah. I warn you about trusting Satoko. I warn you about trusting Satoko, okay, it's now. Mirko and Ark American were internationally you know, wearing I told you so faces. Incidentally, those two were victims of Sudoku's traps pretty early on as well. Now, I was trying to do well enough to make up for you two. And once again, for the showdown, it didn't matter. Maybe this meant I still couldn't match up to the other members yet. You were going to have the lowest ranked member of the club play a punishment game, weren't you? John remarked as though forcing me to recall something I tried to forget to even for a moment. Uh, is that right? I don't think we might understand when you just came up with the punishments game with the president. You looked really heated up. What on earth did you decide on? Uh, uh. Earlier, Mion told me to get uh, an Angel Mode uniform ready. Does that have anything to do with it? He told me to get the biggest sides I could find. Made a coon and Okamura coon were giving me those complex, indescribable looks, wishing empty pity and desire to see something scary all at once. <laughs> All she could do now was laugh. Strangely enough, the more she laughed, the more I felt like it was actually funny. Ugh, I lost! Is that gonna be the punishment? The loser has to wear the Angel Mort's uniform? Oh my, my Varsan, what's the matter? You're smiling, crying, and howling. It's okay, he's just pretending not to like it. You can't hide the excitement at the opportunity to gain valuable experience using the punishment game as an excuse. Is that why she reacted the way she did upon seeing him? He's wearing it right now, isn't he? Right. Ah, what do you mean valuable experience? I held my head in my hands in agony. My state of mind could be summed up with a three-letter word. It was... Sob. Coach gently put his hands on my shoulders. 
was he comforting me, and I was going to say something completely out of left field here. I'm Arsan. In times where you must accept hardship, you should imagine that you're a domesticated mate. See, don't this thing seem kind of fun now? Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Why is it always mates? Red in the face and indulging in his imagination still doing much of his coat said, Oh, master! started twirling around like a ballerina. I have to wonder what kind of word association he uh, had going on in his head. At the very least, it was much different than what was in mind. The first thing that came into my mind when I think of domestication certainly isn't maids. Dominicoon, not Muricoon. Your coach is pretty funny. I'm surprised he can even be a coach. Dominican and American exchanged glances and answer, answered with dry smiles. Then they added that they that he was a really nice person most of the time, which is something you'd normally say about a person like that. The coach's questionable revolution was uh, slow to a stop, and then his expression returned to a clear, calm one, almost making what just happened seem like an illusion. He can switch gears way too fast. Then let us start cleaning up. Hi, Barsan, you seem quite strong. Could you bring the plates over to the wash basins and clean them? Uh, right on it. I hoisted the dirty barbecue plate, seeps the slimy oil clinging to it, and looked for the wash basins. Uh, these, these are heavy. Uh, what? It can't be insane both lines. Where's the wash basins? Over there? Figuring I should make it there before my arms gave out, I headed towards it at a trot. Probably was, though. A lot of the adults who had been helping out were using the wash basin, so I gave up and looked for a different set. I asked them, and they told me there were more right by the assembly hall, too, so I decided to head that way. Rather than multiple basins, there was just one torture fair. I initially thought it would be too small to wash plates as big as these, but it would probably still be faster than waiting for a faucet to open up back there. I turned the faucet and water much nice, nicer looking than it was for. I put a plate under the faucet and scrubbed it with my hand to dry and rub it clean. It didn't go very well. Here you go! A sponge and dish soap. You can wa ah, wash them with just water. It was Shion. She threw a brand new sponge in the container filled with cleaner to me. Oh, thanks. You should have just put them by the base and left it to the grown-ups. You're always doing the right thing. I got the feeling that wasn't quite a compliment. I answered her with a full smile. I was surprised to learn you're a manager for the Andy Bizarre Fighters. I thought you didn't do stuff like that because they had too much of a bar. Yes, it's quite a bar. That's why I've stopped showing up entirely. Didn't Coach say he wanted you to come back? You should pay a visitor once in a while. <laughs> it must feel like it, I guess. Sean made it sound like the end of the world could happen before she felt like it. Whoops. I couldn't keep washing the dishes while preoccupied with conversation. I try to take the my take the take my task seriously. Sean never offered to help, nor got, all, yeah, got, got, got in my way. She just quietly watched the water flowing from the faucet. All right, I heard something. You will uh, stop playing yesterday's game, won't you? Stoker hit the home run, so I think she was the real star player. I didn't know she had those kind of reflexes. Surprised me. She's totally different from Stoker's good. There's not much doubt that all the athletic ability in the family went to her. She smiled as she spoke her eyes, looking at something far away, betraying her reminiscence. Sosakun? Soko Hojo's old bar. Yeah, it's a Toshi Hojo kun. Oh, right. You just moved here this year, didn't you, Kid Chan? You wouldn't have ever met him. I was a little surprised that Shion knew about Satoshi. Never met him, but I know a little. After their parents passed away, transferred to a different school, right? Avoided saying that he ran away from home and used the slightly more vague words that everyone else did. Transferred? Who said anything like that? I hadn't yet realized that Sean's tone had changed slightly. Well, I mean, who was it then? Yeah, I heard it from someone that he transferred. Who? 
You said that because you asked someone, right? Who did I ask? I don't really remember. Even so, you transferred, so that's it, right? Not like there's a problem with it. There is one. Does that mean there's a record of his transfer? To another school. And that someone saw it. I heard about it. Around that time, I not only noticed how awfully caught up on this Xion was, but also how startlingly dangerous her eyes had begun to look. Xion, what's up? You look really serious. With that, Xion seemed to realize the expression she was making. She took a deep breath, pretended to fix her hair, and went back to her composed expression from before. I'm sorry, but kid chan you don't know much about Satoshi-kun, so please don't say that he transferred or anything like that. I'm serious. Please. I realize I must have said something I shouldn't have. But I wasn't immediately sure of what I should apologize for, so I just said one safe word for now. Sorry. I just sort of heard he transferred and believed it. Was it actually something else? It was, of course. Preceded by his parents, he had left his sister and run away. But I'd wanted to try and avoid using the word run away, so I pretended not to know. Upon seeing my flustered reply, Sean realized she was intimidating me and lowered her voice. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not blaming you for anything, Kei-chan. But it's been a little harsh. I apologize. I didn't really mind. It was a fib. I was actually a little scared, even. Was there something wrong with saying he ran away? Was there some sort of misunderstanding in saying that he transferred? But before I could ask her, she turned on her heel to leave. Hey, Xion. Right, good luck with those. Looks like your plate is last. That's the last one you need to wash. Her final remark reminded me of the dishes I had to so easily forgotten about. So embarrassing conversation were we that it got pretty late. I turned the faucet again to get the water flowing faster. I finally scrubbed the plate. When I turned back around, Xion was no longer there. By the time I'd finished washing the plates, most of the other things had been cleaned up. The air had cooled off before I'd realized it, and as the heat that had stuck with us all day dispersed, a nice breeze started to blow. Okay, everyone, can I have your attention? Coach got everyone together to make his closing remarks. And with that, another fun day drew to its close. 